Devon, just about everywhere you would look in downtown Oakland. That was broken into, looted, and defiled overnight. It has uh, been a very violent night. So we saw our city boarded up. Um, and we saw that as an opportunity to bring art and to bring our message out to the street. Even the nights of the protest, people are using spray paint all over everything to write the messages all over the city. Um, so I think the art is an extension of that, is like, oh, okay, now that these boards are here, we can really spend more time and, um, and come together as a community that day that the Black Lives Matter mural went up on 15th Street, I was just walking around and feeling the energy after so much intensity, after being out and having smoke bombs going off and tear gas and all this stuff, to have this kind of peaceful day where everybody came out, we played music and people were just creating together. It was this nice kind of like rejuvenating time in between these moments of intensity and violence. My work isn't to seek validation from anybody. You know, I'm like, I'm not a part of the Black Lives Matter movement. You know what I'm saying? I am a black life trying to move black lives forward. You know, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm not, you know, you're not gonna see me protesting with my hands up. You know what I'm saying? Telling people I can't breathe because I can. You know, I got breath, I got life. And my work is to remind black people that we have life, you know what I'm saying? That we are here breathing, we out here surviving, and we have so much to be proud about, you know? So, like, my work symbolizes black strength, black pride, the black experience. It's beyond the Black Lives Movement, you know? Because this is going to be the movement once the Black Lives Movement dies, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think that the idea of taking public space and reclaiming public space really to spread messages of empowerment and black liberation is uh, really beautiful. Um, however, I am very weary of the fact that um, a lot of artists have viewed this as an opportunity to take up space, um, especially white artists, which is kind of something that happens outside of this issue, um, you know, this particular moment in general. Um, and so it's really important that black people are taking up black space and tell black stories. With any major tragedies that the world is going through or anything like that, I feel like that's an immediate call for any artist, especially like, um, like graffiti artists, to start expressing their voice and, and um, just basically like expressing stuff that the rest of the world can't really like say without, you know, um, breaking some internal rules that they have with themselves. So we do it for everybody else. We're basically letting you know, this is our environment, this is where we live, and this is how we want to paint it, and this is how we want it to look, um, regardless of what anybody else says or thinks. Uh, it's a complete outlaw style of art. The crew that I'm in, uh, PTV, Punk Slugs and Vandals, but there's in, uh, many other acronyms, right? So one is Police Teach Violence, um, and then another one is uh, Protect the Voiceless. And so that goes with exactly like what I was saying before is that we will be the voice for people that don't have a voice. And now, that the people have come out and organized at some degree of resistance to the white power state, we have created and seized more space. That would have been hard to do three years ago. This language would not have been used. Now, because of artists like us, this language is starting to become common. Where did you see in media that they ever used terrorism in relationship to the police before now? Now is becoming more common, and that is our job. We have to transform the visual landscape, the language, and the thinking, and the culture of the masses. It has been done before, it will be done again until we're free.